We are now talking to USA Today baseball writer and reporter Steve Gardner. Steve, what's going on, bud? Uh, not too much. Just a little uh, pennant race action and uh, exciting baseball down the stretch with one more month to play. Absolutely. Uh, do you like Cleveland? Do you think Cleveland's a dying city? I like Cleveland, actually. Mm-hmm. I've been a few times and uh, watched some outstanding baseball. World Series in mm-hmm. 2016 was very exciting there. And uh, they got some nice nice places to eat and, uh, and visit there in the, the progressive field neighborhood. So mm-hmm. I'm, I'm actually uh, kind of a fan of Cleveland. Are, are, are they paying you? <laughs> <laughs> I, I hope the residuals will start coming in soon. <laughs> now after they uh, hear me. Well, where would you rather play, New York or Cleveland, honestly? Uh, that is a different question altogether. <laughs> um, New York by leaps and bounds. Of course. Uncle Stevie will be writing you your check soon. Don't worry. <laughs> Don't you worry. <laughs> there you go. As everybody knows, we are talking to USA Today baseball writer and reporter Steve Gardner. So why don't we get into the MLB, and both New York teams are right now fighting for their dear lives. One team that seems to always win, and the other team seems to find ways to lose. And it, you would think it would be the Mets, not the Yankees, but it's been the Yankees seeming to lose Every kind of way, and the Mets finding a way to win in games that you never see them win. So what are your thoughts right now with the Yankees? What do the Yankees have to do? They brought up, uh, they called up short, their shortstop uh, prospect, Oswald Perez, who a lot of people like. He was the third best prospect in their farm system. Uh, they need some kind of offense, bringing him in. He's known for his defense, but for some reason right. this year, he's, he's got power. He's hitting close to 300. So what do the Yankees have to do? Is this going to help this roster move forward with uh, the month of September? I think it will help. Um, whether it will right the ship, as uh, the Yankee fans uh, have hoped that uh, that they can do before the playoffs start is another question. But, you know, he and Anthony Volpe were the two kind of crown jewels of the infield um, of the prospects that the Yankees had at the beginning of the season. Volpe is a little younger, a little bit less developed, so we will not see him this season. Um, but Peraza definitely, as you said, you know, defensively, very, very good. They can certainly use him. I mean, Isaiah kiner falefa was supposed to be that stabilizing defensive influence for the Yankees, and he hasn't really been that. And so, you know, if you can get a little bit better defensively, save some runs, help the pitching staff out a little bit, um, I, I think that's that's something that can get the momentum rolling back in the proper direction for the Yankees. And, uh, you know, after they've had so much good fortune and have played so well for the first four months of the season, um, they need to get back to that. Another thing that's been a rocky road for the Yankees has been their bullpen in the second half of the season so far. Clay Holmes, who is the best closer in the American League probably in the first half of the season, and then he's had some issues in the second half, just got, came back from injury now, and then Araldis Chapman as well. They might get Zach Britton back. What do you think is the best approach for the Yankees' bullpen going into the postseason? Well, I think for sure is to get Clay Holmes enough reps, enough innings to be able to get back into that closer's role, to get comfortable again. Um, and the other thing, too, is what about Aroldis Chapman? You know, I mean, he's a guy that that can give them, you know, the strikeout ability, um, the, the left handed um, uh, ability to to close games out if they need him. Um, that's I think that's the key for the Yankees and being able to get him back and healthy and, and into the mix. Um, that's an important thing for them as well. And that one-two punch to go with Loisega and, and Wandy Peralta, who's been, who's been pretty good this season. Um, the bullpen is, you know, has been a strength for them historically. And uh, I think it still can be, but it uh, certainly needs to work things out over September. And because you have that nice lead in the American League East, they do have a little bit of wiggle room to try and be able to do that. We are talking to USA Today baseball writer and reporter Steve Gardner. It's it's so funny because uh, this weekend they have a very big series against Tampa, a team that's six games behind them. And if the if the Yankees go into this series and lose, uh, you know, the majority of the games, I think it's a three game series. Is it is it is it four games or three games? Speedy, look that up for me. I think it's four games. I think it's uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. If if they lose three out of the four games. The, the Yankees could really just be up by three games, and this, this could be uh-oh time for the New York Yankees. And 
The Yankees haven't been in that position all season long, and now you're going into the final month of baseball. Right there, looming is the playoffs, and they could completely fall out of first place as quick as they were in first place 15 games coming out of the All-Star break. Three-game series. Three-game series. So if they lose all three games, they're only up six. So what what are your thoughts there? The thing is, you know, the Yankees are are slowly getting healthy. Giancarlo Stanton coming back, and the Rays with Shane McClanahan, you know, who's been their best pitcher all season long, now on the injured list, you know, the, the shoe is kind of on the other foot with the uh, with the Rays and the Yankees. So, I mean, yes, that could happen, certainly. But the Yankees, their position is getting a little bit stronger and the Rays position is getting a little bit weaker at the present time. So I wanted to move on to the Mets, who I who they've played well in the second half of the season, but did have kind of a very strange trade deadline. Daniel Vogelbach, I love, who's been a very big spark for the Mets on, getting on base and home runs. But a lot of questions with their bullpen, too. And the biggest one for me is a concern with not getting enough lefties. They only have David Peterson on, and Joely Rodriguez. Is that a concern, do you think, going into the playoffs, the lack of pitching depth in lefties? Up a little bit, but, I mean, if, if that's your only nit to pick... Um, especially when you've got the great starting pitching um, with the way DeGrom looks uh, lately to go with Scherzer and, and the rest of those guys. I mean, it's a, it's a small negative. And, and I think overall, you know, um, Edwin Diaz has been lights out this season. The rest of the bullpen has been fairly solid. And you're right, they could have possibly done more at the trade deadline, but they did make a few incremental um, additions there in getting Vogel back, as you said, and Darren Ruff, you know, to kind of form a little platoon there, left-right punch. So I, I think the Mets did what they had to, and they didn't really, you know, jeopardize any of the future by trading away the, some of their, their best prospects. We are talking to USA Today baseball writer and reporter Steve Gardner. Steve, we sit here today and we, we look at both New York teams, but – the Mets really stand out because of their starting pitching. We, you just mentioned Max Scherzer, mm-hmm. uh, Jacob DeGrom. But these two pitchers really this season haven't stayed healthy. Now, Scherzer had the uh, the oblique problem, and uh, it's been consistent because this isn't the first time he had an oblique problem. When he was with Washington, he had the same problem. Uh, but he's slowly gotten back into it, and he's looked really, really good. And then Jacob DeGrom can't stay healthy. Now, this is a man that expects he's going to opt out of his contract at the end of the year. He wants to be paid more than Max. Uh, Steve Cohen, I believe, will be willing to give him that money, but for lesser years. Where does this team go if they somehow go into the playoffs and lose in a divisional game? Yeah, that's that's the thing. When you go all in the way the Mets have and basically said, you know, we are in this to win this. And you know, make the moves, all the moves with the Starling Marte and everything else over the off season. Um, yeah, it's going to be a huge letdown, I think, if they don't get to the World Series. Which you know, when facing the Dodgers, uh, a team that has the playoff experience, has the talent, probably superior top to bottom roster talent uh, to the Mets. Um, you know, it's one of those things where the expectations get so high, especially with the, the way that the regular season is gone to this point, the star power that they have, it's going to feel like, you know, almost Yankee-ish to where if you don't get to the World Series, it's an unsuccessful season. I think if the Mets can get to at least the NLCS, then it can be a success because, you know, they've had all of the bad breaks, the bad luck, the bad ownership and front office, and now those things are turning around. And if you don't make it all the way the first year in this, you know, Steve Cohen era, at least you've got a nice building block to take into next season. So I I don't think it'll be a total loss. It'll sting, obviously, if they lose and don't make it to the World Series. But there's still an awful lot of progress that's been made that, that the Mets fans can hang their hats on. So I'll ask one of the fans' questions. Uh, Carl asks, uh, the Padres sputtering, Hater struggling to say the least, and the whole Tatis debacle with the 80-game suspension and the uh, the motorcycle accident. Do you think the Padres can catch a sinking ship? Because remember last year they had a very similar collapse already struggling in the second half this year. Yeah, I, I think this is one of those where the Padres have so many, you know, they assembled this roster, uh, at least the, the way that it's looking right now, at the last minute, you know, all the trade deadline additions, 
not only Juan Soto, but Josh Bell, you mentioned Josh Hader and Brandon Drury, all those guys, you've got to fit that into the, the clubhouse chemistry for the final month plus of the season and make that work. And we see, you know, the results, they haven't been able to do that. And especially with the distractions with Hader being so bad and being yanked out of the closer role, finally getting a save uh, last night. And then, as you mentioned, the, the Fernando Tatis situation, that, you know, takes the whole focus off of coming together and winning and sort of puts it on one guy who's not part of that and hasn't been part of that the whole season and making him kind of the focus of the clubhouse, which can't, you know, can't help them at all. Uh, so I think that the distractions and everything else is it's a talented team, but it's a flawed team. And uh, I don't think it's a team that can can really put together that kind of streak, get on that hot streak that you need down the stretch and, and into the playoffs. James, I mean, Steve, you, you think of uh, Jordan Montgomery with St. Louis, and he has been unbelievable. He's been fantastic. Everybody took to ch- really looked at the Yankees and said, uh, when they added Hader, they said, uh, they, I mean, they, I'm sorry, Bader. They expected Bader to be a big part of this run for the Yankees, give him that extra outfielder, give him a base stealing outfielder, something that the Yankees have been dreading uh, for and wanting for years. And they, they add a player like this, but we haven't seen him on the field. And then Jordan Montgomery pitches five games with St. Louis. He's, I think his ERA right now is one. I mean, his, his whip is like almost under one. I, I mean, he's, he's been unbelievable with St. Louis. And all the Yankee fans were taking shots at the Yankees, thought he was horrible, get rid of him. Now, finally, he's pitching well with St. Louis. And, and Yankee fans are wondering, what what is St. Louis doing that the Yankees couldn't do to make Jordan Montgomery as as the superstar he has become with the Cardinals? I, I may put a little bit of this on the Yankee fans themselves. I mean, with all of that pressure, all that criticism, and making Jordan Montgomery the focus of that, when he went to St. Louis, all of that just wiped the slate clean, and he could focus on pitching, doing his thing. I mean, Yadi Molina behind the plate, has to be an asset. Um, the Cardinals, one of the best defensive teams in all of Major League Baseball, behind him, that's an asset. You know, when the Yankees are, are bundling th- bungling things behind him, um, it can ruin your confidence. And as a pitcher, confidence is huge. And, you know, I didn't see too many of Jordan Montgomery's starts as a Yankee, but the ones that I did see, he did not look like a confident pitcher on the mound um, the way that, say, Dester Cortez did earlier in the season. Um, before his injury. So he comes to St. Louis. It's a completely different, less pressure type atmosphere. He's not being asked to, to, to win the pennant for them or anything like that. Not that he was in New York, but still being able to, to have the veteran experience, the defense behind him, it's just a great situation to fall into. And he's, you know, I, I think we've seen flashes of Jordan Montgomery over the years to where we knew that maybe he had this in him, maybe not for as many games in a row, but he was a decent pitcher in New York at times. And now he's been incredible in St. Louis. And uh, it's certainly uh, making Yankee fans Throw up. very skeptical <laughs> Throw up. Of, of the uh, of the trade <laughs> and the motivation behind it, especially when, you know, Cortez gets injured. And now the, the starting pitching depth that was supposed to be a strength for the Yankees is is now not so much. I was upset about Jordan Montgomery. And Speedy will tell you, it was at the final hour of the trade deadline, and when I heard Jordan Montgomery was traded, and mm. Speedy, Speedy actually liked the trade. I did at the time, because I thought Bader playing center field more would take pressure off of Judge and Stanton. And he hasn't played yet. And no. maybe Bader, when he, he actually does play before the playoffs, because they're saying he'll be back this month, Maybe he has that second half or that month where, you see, that's why he's a genius. That's why he made that move, because Bader is going to give them speed. He's going he's gonna to hit 300. He's going into the playoffs where he's going to give the Yankees that depth that they needed in the outfield with Ben Attendi. But there's no guarantees to that. But there is a guarantee of what Jordan Montgomery has been in the playoffs. And, and really, in the last three years, I said this over and over again, Jordan Montgomery has been the Yankees' best playoff pitcher in the last three years. And now you you give him up for a guy that we don't know is going to work in New York. I trust Brian Cashman. The guy is a genius. He really is, even though Yankee fans want to throw him to the, the pigs and the wolves. 